Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome to your February 2018 Astro Update. It's Raina here. And as a fellow Sag, let me be the first to say that I am very pumped that Mars is going to be in our sign all month long. So as January began, Mars was in Scorpio and Scorpio is a sign right before Sagittarius. So this is a 12th house and the 12th house is a place where it's very internalized, all of the things that go on there. It deals with past lives. It deals with, um, uh, so that's, you could say that's karma. It's dealing with, um, some, uh, issues surrounding ways that you trip yourself up, addiction, and it's a mystical house. So th there's, there's that, but it's not a place where taking direct action is really featured. So when you have Mars in the 12th house, you can feel like a caged animal. And starting in late January, Mars goes into Sagittarius and Sagittarians start to feel like they've got a new lease on life. I think that's the best way of putting it. And you may even feel the urge to get physical, okay? So in the 12th house, you were getting metaphysical, and now you're getting physical. And this makes you very successful if you're trying to start some exercise regimen, and anything where you're trying to promote yourself. The first house is the house of your image. And you may have some need to promote yourself. Maybe you're looking for a job. Maybe you're looking for clients or a, a new relationship. And Mars gives you that courage. Uh, Sagittarians, you would think that we are all just very outgoing because a fire sign like Sag uh, tends to be extroverted, but we're not just our sun signs. And some of us are a little bit more introverted than others. And having Mars in our sign gives quite a confidence boost. Just make sure that it's not too much confidence where it becomes cockiness. So there's that. And I, and I have to just kind of say that we come into the month of February with that blue moon lunar eclipse on the 31st of January. So it's really right behind that. And a lot of times you will see the aftermath of the, the eclipse or the, you know, most of the effects happening uh, after that particular date. So don't get hung up on the 31st of January. Some of these things may play out in February and beyond. And so that lunar eclipse happened in Leo at 11 degrees of Leo. And for Sagittarius, Leo is our ninth house of the higher mind of tr foreign travel, or you could just say long distance travel, just our philosophical framework. And so there may be things that you are kind of throwing out in terms of uh, beliefs that no longer serve you based on what you have known about life and you're shifting your beliefs. And some people may even be finishing a course of studies and it's like you're, you're going into a whole new um, phase of life we rule the ninth house. So this lunar eclipse has special meaning for Sagittarians. So that's going on. And on the 10th of the month, Venus goes into Pisces, which is the fourth house of home and family. Now, this means that for the first uh, week and a half, Venus is in the third house, which is the house of communication, the internet. And some Sagittarians may find that you are profiting from the internet in some fashion. The third house and the fourth house are featured for Sages 
in the month of February. And I don't know about you guys, but I oftentimes feel that February really breezes by. So, (laughs) you know, uh, as I was looking at what action was taking place in February, it seemed like it was lighter than normal. But then, of course, I remember how much of a blip in time February's tend to be. So Venus can bring money where she goes. And then the third house, we could be talking about some kind of an internet based business, some type of writing that you're doing, communicating. And by the way, with that lunar eclipse in the ninth house, that could be something regarding a long-term writing project, maybe some kind of a publishing of something, or maybe something comes to people's attention that you have already published that you thought was just kind of um, not selling very well or being ignored by others. So when Venus goes into the fourth house, this favors any kind of Uh, decision that you have made to sell a house, maybe you're profiting from the sale of your house, or you're, you have the money to buy a new house. And it can be a time when you are gussying up your house because Venus can beautify things. So that's happening on the 10th. And then on the 15th, there is this new moon solar eclipse. Well, a solar eclipse is a new moon, 27 degrees of Aquarius back in that third house. So new beginnings when it comes to some kind of internet project, maybe something that you, maybe you put a video on YouTube and it goes viral and that launches your YouTube career. You know, that's just one possible example, but um, there's that. So some, you, you may have a new lease on life, um, connected to the internet. The third house is also the house of your neighborhood, as well as your um, siblings and some other extended family members. So you may see that you are relating to your siblings in a new way. And if you have um, bought a new house, you may be exploring your new, your new community. On the 17th, Mercury goes into that fourth house. Mercury sometimes can indicate contracts. So if you have closed on a house, you may be signing the documents. And um, February is clear for, for that sort of thing because there are no retrogrades to impede your um, moving forward on things. And When Mercury, the other thing too, this is important too, is that Venus in the fourth house can indicate harmony with your family of origin. So you've had it in your third house and your fourth house. You have Mercury uh, visiting your third and fourth houses in February. So you may be like doing a lot of communicating with your family of origin. And if you've had problems in the past, you may be sorting some of these things out and starting to really listen. Uh, Mercury is about communication, but remember that communicate, communicating isn't just talking, it's also listening and hearing what other people have to say and respecting them for it, even if it differs from your beliefs. And then on the 18th, the sun goes into Pisces and now we're in a totally different sign. So the sun is in those two houses as well. And the sun can lend creativity to a situation, it can lend healing, and just your focus can be on home matters, and and you can be uh, much more of a homebody at this time. Maybe you are trying to redecorate, and this is something that really um, has grabbed your attention for some reason. So it's it's very interesting for Sagittarians, because we are not necessarily known as people associated with, um, you know, being homebodies or anything like that. But we may approach it from a different perspective, and still um, kind of uh, live out these transits in a similar way as others. 
Um, so it looks like really good for family matters and home matters in February, as well as anything dealing with um, writing and teaching, um, Sages, which uh, we tend to be very strong in those areas. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you'd like a private reading, such as my natal chart interpretation or the transits that are coming into your life in the next six months to a year, please visit me at rainandmoonastrology.com. The link is below. And I wish all of you a blessed February. Bye.